As we are wrapping up day three of the Mackinac Policy Conference that is put on every year by the Detroit Regional Chamber. I'm Christy McDonald, and we're so glad that you're joining us as we close off the conference. And I am very pleased to be the moderator for the last panel session here that we are showing you streaming live on myvote.org of wrapping up the to-do list for the chamber for next year. And joining me right now is Sandy Baruja, the president of the Detroit Regional Chamber, and Nancy Schlichting, the CEO of um, Henry Ford Health Systems, and also the chair of the conference. Congratulations to both of you as another successful year. Thank you. We, we, I think we Thank had a great you. time, didn't a we? Absolutely. And it flew by. It was just terrific. And the speakers were fantastic. The momentum was amazing. There's a great spirit, I think, out of this conference. And we got a lot of things to do. Yeah. A lot of things to do. Tell me first, before we dive into the to-do to list, and I know it's a long one. I know you're going to have your work cut out for you for the next year. Sandy, talk to me about um, some of the stimulating sessions that you went to and some of the good conversations that you were able to have with people around the Grand Hotel for the last three days. I think the overriding theme, at least I took away from this mm -hmm. conference, is that Michigan has indeed turned the corner. I mean, you know, last year when we met, you know, uh, the governor had been in office for, you know, about six months, and there was a lot of activity, a lot of things that happened. Now we're seeing the fruits of that activity mm -hmm. in terms of how Michigan has gone from 49th to 7th in tax friendliness in terms of, you know, uh, uh, business attractiveness. Mm -hmm. We've seen our unemployment rate drop faster than any other place in the nation. And now we're looking at opportunity as opposed to what do we need to fix. I mean, we still have a lot of things to fix, but the conversation is all about kind of the future, that, that you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting closer and closer. Many business leaders, Nancy, were sitting here at the table with me and telling me, in years past, there's been a lot of talk. We, we've got to do this, and we're going to get close to doing this, but there is finally people are seeing some action. Is that what you're hearing from people? Absolutely. In fact, that was one of the important aspects of planning the conference, because we knew that we were getting to this inflection point. We knew there was growing momentum, not only in the city, but across the state. And we wanted to tell the story better, because one of the things we have to do is message better, communicate it, share our enthusiasm, uh, have a different brand and a different sense of culture in the state of Michigan. It's nice that Detroit Public Television has been able to be a partner and to bring this Fantastic to people partner. at home and to help them realize what actually goes on here. Over the last couple of years, you have cultivated a to-do list coming out of the conference. So let's talk about what you have on your list, what you have brought up as the, the issues you're going to tackle over the next year that came out of conversations that you had right here at the conference. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah, I'll be glad to start. And I, I would add that, you know, the notion of transparency uh, for the conference is also part of that accountability mm -hmm. that we're trying to build. And, and so we're happy to share uh, the to-do list and I'll share part of it and, and then Sandy will share the rest. First of all, we want to partner with Governor Rick Snyder, uh, Rick Snyder and key institutions to host a statewide military veterans hiring conference with the goal of securing Michigan employment for veterans. A very important issue that Governor Snyder is championing, championing in the state and something all the business community can be a part of. So we're looking forward to that. Great. All right. The second item is to engage in an effort to help Detroit-based businesses cut through local government red tape to help promote business startups and success. We want to make it easier, especially for small and mid-sized businesses. And I think that you still hear that complaint from time to right. time that it's hard, even though that there are so many organizations that are out there to help saying, hey, SOS, we want to help you be able to start up and be successful here, that it still can be difficult. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, and the small businesses have the, have the least amount of resources. Mm -hmm. To do. All right. Who's going to pick up the third I'll on the, the to third, do? the third, and that's to lead a delegation of Detroit area business leaders on a lessons learned trip to Washington, D.C., in partnership with both Whole Foods Market and former Washington, D.C. Mayor Anthony Williams. And we had participants from Mayor Williams at the conference, as well as one of the Whole Food executives. And we're excited about learning how to take advantage of basically Whole Foods coming into our city and what they can do, not only for food, but also for community. There is a lot of excitement surrounding when Red Elk was talking, and I got a chance to, to meet with him and spend some time. And also with Anthony Williams, because he faced similar issues in Washington, D.C. Yeah. when he was the mayor for two terms there and was able to do such a massive turnaround. Hearing from him at the conference, what was some of the reaction from people? people. Well, uh, from my perspective, you know, he was my mayor. I lived in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. for so long. And uh, when I, I told him at, at the end of one of the sessions, I, I don't remember you being that funny. <laughs> 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 he can probably relax a little bit more now you that know, he's... But, you know, it, for Detroit, it's, it's, it, it is the message of there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel because there's so many parallels between where Washington, D.C. was and where Detroit is now. And Mayor Williams says, listen, when we started our revitalization in Washington, D.C., we didn't have nearly the number of assets 
assets and the quality of assets that Detroit has. Okay, all right. So where are we now on the to-do list? So uh, the fourth one is going to be uh, we want to work with the College for Creative Studies to create a Detroit future envisioning project. And that's something that was talked about uh, in uh, a session with Ralph Gilles from Chrysler, John McElroy from Autoline, and Elmer um, um, Molnar, is mm -hmm. that right? Right. Uh, who is the dean of the College for Creative Studies. Mm -hmm. And so the, let's, get, let's get these CCS students, you know, kind of engaged in terms of what can Detroit look like? Mm -hmm. I mean, what are the opportunities in Detroit? Because we've got a lot of land, right? Right. You know, so what are the, what are, you know, so, you know, what's kind of the blue sky thinking there? So we're really excited about that project. I, I would add, we've been using yeah. those students to see our world differently at Henry Ford as part of our Innovation Institute. And uh, it's amazing what they come up with. You know, amazing resource. And to be able to talk to the young people because aren't they the ones that we want to they stay are here? Future. We want them to stay here, don't move out of state, and, right. and start, to start to create here and, and really help us out, get them engaged. All right. And our last to do is uh, we had this powerhouse entrepreneurship panel. I'm mean, mm -hmm. talking about high powered international entrepreneurs that are based right here in Detroit that have phenomenal success, that have turned companies and sold, in one case, sold their company for $850 million. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, these are people who are committed to Detroit. So we want to do something, and we're not quite sure exactly what it's going to be, but it's going to be about helping connect our high potential entrepreneurs to talent, coaching, and capital. And we've got a lot of assets here to build on. We have some national assets that we can uh, tap into. So we're going to create this program probably in the next two or three months. You know, you talk about um, small businesses, which sometimes have a hard time getting through red tape or getting capital, but also the people who've got those ideas that they would love to do something, but wow, how overwhelming is it to start? When I was listening to the Josh Linkners of the world and the Dave Zilkos from Garden Fresh, you know, you see the success that they've had in starting out with a simple idea and if you want to listen to them for like three hours, kind of capture it right. in a bottle, and, and that's a wonderful opportunity, I think, if you start to get those people with ideas, match them up in a mentoring situation, and, and you could, who knows what the future well, could hold, Well, and frankly, Nancy. we can learn from them. Mm -hmm. I okay. mean, I think there are people who would like to start businesses who perhaps are, have left other businesses, but they need to, th to listen to some of these young people, frankly. They understand the technology, the way to connect. Uh, we have a lot to learn from them as well. Now we so that's the end of the to-do list. Well, there, there, it's, there, pretty, there, it's pretty long already. Well, I mean, that's, there, there's a, a 5.5 mm -hmm. one, and that is that the the governor gave us. Uh, you know, for, uh, first of all, this to-do list has been you know vetted by the governor, so he knows uh, uh, and, and 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 has approved this, and we this that's part of tradition around here. Uh, but what we also are doing is that the governor, during his final keynote address mm -hmm. that took place earlier today, he gave the audience six things that he wanted action on, six things that he wanted people to sign up for. Things like uh, Michigan Talent Connect and Michigan Business Connect and you know help with veterans and things like that. So we as the Detroit Regional Chamber, we're going to start collecting all those people who have raised their hand. And so uh, so uh, that's, that is 5.5 .5 on our to-do list. I love seeing that, people raising their hand, because it was kind of like, first it was like, uh, all right, I'm on board. And yeah. to see that show of support, uh, do you think he really inspired people today, Nancy? I do. I, I thought he was terrific. In fact, he's been terrific from day one of the conference and continued to be engaged the entire time. And, you know, that's what we need in our state. I mean, to have a leader like that who has a vision uh, and who does, really wants everyone's participation. It, I think it's fantastic. We have expanded the coverage of the con uh, the conference. More people know what goes on up here because we're able to, to bring it to them at home. Does a to-do list also show that there is serious conversation that happens here, that it's not just parties and handshakes, but that once people start to collaborate and say, well, you know what, I've tried this, maybe you should try this, and start to compare notes. And when you come out with a list like this and say, you know what, coming out of the conversations we had, we want to be held accountable so we don't just say, what happened last year? Um, I, I have no idea. Well, let's just go on next year. Yeah, well, we started this conference with the conclusion of the to-do list from last year. Right. And so that was our first piece of business when we opened up the doors to say that here's our to-do list from last year, here's where we stand on all seven items, mm -hmm. and, and we issued everyone a report, so everyone's got a report uh, you know, that holds us accountable. And Six I would add that yeah. that happens at our board meetings. We get, yeah. mm -hmm. we get the scorecard throughout the year on how we're doing. Yeah. So uh, do you have a number or an idea of how many of the people who are here were first-timers? You know, that's a great question, Christy. I don't know. I, you know, our, our attendance has been roughly steady at around 1,500. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a good, comfortable number for us. I mean, in, you know, if it's much bigger, it gets a little too crowded. If mm -hmm. it's much bigger, we have no place 
no place for people to sleep <laughs> uh, unless they want to sleep. Small island. Unless they want to sleep on the docks. <laughs> right. Um, so, Nancy, when you finally leave here later this afternoon or on tomorrow, is it a sigh of, of relief or is it a... I can't wait to get recharged and we get back to work and know that we've we've started something here. You know, I sure need a little rest. Um, <laughs> but to be honest with you, I, this has been an exhilarating experience for me. And I and people have said, you know, are you glad it's over? And I, you know, not really. I mean, I, it's only starting. We're going to take what we've learned over the course of the last three days and the enthusiasm of everyone who is here. We're going to take full advantage of that, uh, both with the chamber and I think as a region and as a state. So it's very exciting. And she stuck with me for another year because now she's going to be the chair of the Detroit Regional Chamber. She she becomes my direct boss, so she's stuck with me for another year <laughs> if she wants like it or not. Which I'm very happy <laughs> about. <laughs> That's what we like to see. But, but um, what is it in terms of like a working relationship and putting a, on a conference like this and making sure that you're talking to the people and gathering, uh, you know, gathering the right people to m make sure that you've got a great agenda that people are going to be interested in? Obviously, this has worked here, this this relationship. Well, has. It's, and it's, it's obviously the two of us, but we have a program planning committee. We also have a CEO advisory group, and we have an incredible staff of, of Sandy's team members. Who and your team members. Yeah, and my, and my team who really worked weather together so well. And I think that's why we had a great success. Yeah. All right, let me ask you this. What was the biggest surprise of the conference? The biggest surprise? Wow. Are you not surprised easily, Sandy? I, n n generally not. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, spent, I spent most of my career in national politics, so really very little surprise. Very little surprise you were shocked you. Uh, well, biggest you surprise, know, what do you think, Nancy? It Any went surprise? smoothly, but you know, the thing that I was so pleased about is that I wanted the, one of the themes to be inclusion of every sector of our economy, of every age group, of every dimension of the diversity of our region and state. And I think we captured that, and I heard very positive feedback from a lot of people that perhaps in years past didn't feel as, as much a part of it, and this year did. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. I don't have a surprise, but I'll give you a gold star example. Oh, right? I love gold okay, stars. Gold star, gold star goes to Tom Friedman. Mm -hmm. Tom Friedman got off a little plane at like oh dark 30 this morning, <laughs> had to get up a couple hours afterwards for a little event that we did with uh, Governor Snyder, Bill Ford, and a handful of others. And he was signing books, he was chatting up, he was friendly, he was relaxed. There was a little crisis with his with his remarks because uh, the, apparently the version he brought with him didn't have all the pages and we're trying to get, you know, this is all happening last minute. <laughs> and I mean, here's a guy who didn't sleep at all and he was just perfectly calm relaxed, couldn't be more friendly, and he was this guy who was a three-time Pulitzer Prize winner. So, uh, yeah, he did a terrific he, yeah. job. He, he, did a, he did a tremendous job. Gold I star. heard a lot of people talking about that session. And yeah. then he actually came and he sat down on the desk and did a 15-minute 15 interview, 15 interview with us. So yeah. it, was, it was wonderful all around. I want to talk about one thing that's actually behind you. And it's been great to have the parlor of the Grand Hotel as a, just a living, breathing background for a new set. And how often do you get to put a new set in the middle of the Grand Hotel? But take a look at the whiteboards behind us. Then this has been yep. going on throughout the entire sessions. Tell me a little bit about the idea behind having Julie do this. Well, uh, so we're always looking for new ideas, right? right? When, when I inherited this conference two years ago, you know, we sat the team down and said, listen, this is a great conference. It's a great venue, but it can be so much more. And that's when we made the changes to make it much more fast paced. That's when we created the partnership with DPTV. This is one of the things that we brought in this year. So that how do we visualize? How do we, how, if someone's not going to take notes, mm -hmm. how can we get something that we can shrink down on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and say, hey, here's the depiction of what we talked about. These have been, we have, we actually have people offering money. You know, offering money for them, and you know, is there any way I would you know, love to even have a, a booklet, like recreate a booklet of this was our time, and this kind of illustrates all the sessions, and you're able to take it away. It really is, um, again, striking just how visual things can be, even when you're just talking. And, about and it them. was fun to see so many people walking by them during the right. the conference to actually see, you know, what what was striking them, the words, the phrases, the ideas, uh, and that's really what it was for. And I, I thought it was a brilliant idea, Sandy. Thank you for t bringing uh, it forward. Uh, uh, the, the team brought it together, but again. I Another new thing that we're doing mm -hmm. is that we are actually going to produce a, um, a, a hard bound version, not hardbound, but a hard copy version of a summary of this conference. You know, that'll obviously be electronically right. as well too, but we're going to include all of these boards from all of these uh, sessions that we've done. A great way to look back and again, remind and, and refresh ourselves of some of the messages, some of the sessions that right. people saw, and to continue to get engaged to keep moving Michigan forward. Any last words as we start to wrap up? 
Nancy, you go. No, I just thank you for uh, really helping us, uh, again, provide a real transparent view of this conference and engage so many of the wonderful people who are here that made it a success. Oh, well, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. And it's one of those things that um, you need to know to be able to comment on things and be able to get engaged and whether you want to vote or learn more about issues or get involved with business communities and just see how the politics of our region are playing out. It's a, gr it's a great way to, to be here and, and kind of have that window, and we appreciate the partnership. Uh, you have been fantastic. The entire DPTV crew have been fantastic, and uh, we just love our partnership with you all. Thanks, and it's very true because you might see me sitting here by myself on the set for a long period of time, but it really takes a crew of 30 and more people um, behind the cameras who are uh, in, in the production trucks and people who have strung the cable and done so much work. So we want to say thank you to all the DPTV crew who's out there and doing it. You guys are the ones that are really doing all the hard work, so thank you. And thank you, Nancy Schlichting. Thank you, Sandy Baruha. And do we say then that the the conference is adjourned, or how this do you is end the final it? Act I of the think conference. it is. This yeah, is it. we've issued the to-do list. The press release is going to go out. It came out here first on DPTV, and then we will uh, we'll let the rest of the world know momentarily. Thank you so much, and Thank congratulations you. on a, another great conference. Thank you very we much. Thank you so much.